Hi, this is Carrie with Learn Da Vinci Resolve. And Ramon Bannister asks, uh, well, he says, good video. I'd like to see more videos on creating titles like lower thirds, upper thirds, etc. You've done two videos about that. One which showed how to create a template to use in the edit tab, but I'd like to see more. All right, Fro, Ramon, this is for you. Uh, this is what we're going to create today. This is uh, just a simple real estate uh, title. It's going to slide in from the left and slide back out. Now, as simple as this seems, there's a couple things that are going to be a little interesting about it. So we'll get right to it as soon as I come right back. Stay right there. I said that this was, you know, kind of an interesting one. And the reason being is these two bars. If we look at these bars, they have this slant to them. And this actually took me a while to figure out because my goal is always to do it in the app. I could easily have created that in Photoshop, brought it in as a graphic and animated it, but I wanted to make it so that you could reuse this, change the color of that, change the color of the, you know, the opacity change whatever you wanted to change on this i wanted to make this easy to be modifiable not just static so that took some thinking in how to figure this out so let's bounce into resolve and uh, we'll see how we did this okay now that i'm in resolve i'm going to grab a new fusion composition and make sure my playhead is over that i sure wish you could just select it but the playhead has to be over it and I'm probably just going to nudge that over to the right using, you can nudge something left and right one frame using the comma and the period key. So you see how that shifts back and forth. All right, now we're going to go ahead and go into Fusion. Get my media out over on the right hand side there. And I need to start with like that background plate or, uh, you know, those, those bars that were there. So... I thought at first, well, maybe I could use a rectangle. I, I could draw it. I could use a polygon and simply draw it, and that would be one way of doing it. But then you couldn't modify it. And what if you wanted less slant, more slant, no slant? Now, there took me a second, but I think I came up with a good way of doing this. So I'm gonna use a um, Shape 3D. And by default, it's just a plane. And that's kind of what I want. Uh, we just need to adjust the size of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a few other components to this that we're gonna need. We're gonna need um, a, a background. This is gonna have to go into there. Or we're gonna need a background so we can adjust the color. And then out of the shape 3D, we're going to have a Merge 3D. So I'll have that over here. After the Merge 3D, you have to have a render node. So I'll have put a render in there, and that can connect to my media out. So far, so good. I have a black square. Awesome. All right, let's adjust the background, and we'll make it just a kind of a shade of gray, basically. Go to our Shape and our Transform over here, and go to Scale or yeah, scale. I don't want to lock the X, Y, and Z. So I want to open those up. My X is going to be wider. My Y is going to be smaller and probably somewhere in there. Then I can move this down and I'm going to position it on the edge. Right there. All right. So far, so good. And now I also have opacity. So I want to make it somewhat transparent. And this is one of those things that as a template, I want someone who buys my title pack to be able to adjust. So this is why I'm doing it like this. Okay, I'm going to move these uh, nodes here out of the way a little bit. Now, to get that slant, that's what kind of took me a second to figure out. And I'm going to use the Bender tool. And the Bender allows you to do things, bend, taper, twist, and shear. And so you can make one of those uh, 
those things you see outside of malls and stuff, the little squiggly guy, you could actually make one of those uh, using this. So I'm going to use shear. And if we look at how shear works, I'm going to take one of the axis and I'm going to adjust the angle. Or I'm not the angle. I'm going to adjust the amount. Well, look at that. That's pretty much exactly what I wanted. All right. Uh, well, that was easy, right? Took and I had to really think about this to uh, figure out how I wanted to do it. So yeah, it's got that same shear to it on the left hand side. I just have it off screen. Not that big of a deal. All right. So I'm going to take these three, hit copy, unselect, paste them back in here and connect those to my merge 3D node. Now it's identical here, but I want this one to be a little smaller. So I'm going to adjust this. Well, let's get it out of the way. We're going to have to bring it down here and I'm going to adjust my size. I want that one to be a little smaller and move that. Here we go. So things are looking not too shabby here. Um, I'll probably adjust my Y, bring it up there a little bit. I can adjust the size of my, oops, not that one. I want to adjust the size of my X. So I bring it out a little bit more and we're looking good. We're looking really good so far. All right. So I'm going to move those up and out of the way. And now I can just add text. So I could use a text plus node, but this isn't going to connect to the merge 3d. I'm going to have to do uh, render it and then do a merge node. And while that will work, it seems it, it's a little complicated doing it that way. What if I do a 3d text and I'll put uh, one, two, three, four, Boogie Avenue. All right. Now, if I connect that to my merge 3d, now I've got my size. I got to get that under control here. So the advantage that I have by doing this all in 3d is when I'm done, I can manipulate things a little bit better. I can, uh, do everything as one transform to get it to um, animate in and out. And sure, yes, I could do it with just text and do my rendering and then start doing regular text. That would work fine. Um, let's actually do that. So I have, I can do it here. Now, the other thing I would, I also have to remember to do is to pull that text because it's on the same plane. So I can have it behind it. I can put it in front of it. Doing it this way also allows me to do some lighting and I could animate some shadows and things as well. So we could do it with text 3D, but let's go ahead and do it with regular text just so we can see how this would work. So after the render node, I'm going to have to put a merge node. And one of the things, and I have said this in many videos, one of the things I love about Resolve is that there's often more than one way of doing something. And this is one of those examples. I can do some things in 3D, some things in 2D. I can do it all in 3D. 2 2 Boogie Avenue. And I'll go ahead and put this again in place. And let's, let's adjust the size down a little bit. I want that to be left justified now, or actually I probably want this to be right justified that way. When I create this as a template, the text is always going to start at the end point and go left. So it'll fill that spot better. I think that's going to be a better way of doing things. Now, because I also used text, I can um, do some other things with it, with uh, some drop shadows, uh, transforming the characters. I don't think I really want to do much of the other shading things. I, I just going to kind of leave it the way it is for now. So let's just kind of get through it and get to the next part. So I'm going to, I'll copy that and I'll paste another text note in here. Now remember a merge node 
can only have two inputs, a foreground and a background. So I'm going to move this merge node down because now I have to add another merge node. If you're doing a lot of these, it can seem that you have a lot of merge nodes and it's true. You will. Um, there's just no way around it. Um, that's the whole purpose of merge nodes. So I'm going to call this anywhere, Pennsylvania. And remember that smaller one is, or the bottom one is smaller. So I'm going to adjust my text size to make it appropriate for that box. All right. So now we'll go back to the edit tab. What do we have? We have the overlay on here. Okay. It's not doing anything. It's just, it pops in and it'll pop out when it's done. So let's get to animating it. So oh, all these pieces here, and I'm just going to grab them and slide them off to the side here, or you can zoom in and out. I'm using the, the command key and just scrolling up and down. So that's one way of doing it, but I want to get these guys up and out of the way here. And after this merge node, I'm going to add a transform. Now this transform is just going to let me manipulate where I want these things in space, right? So I'm going to go to my first frame and let's see, I did this in 119 frames. So I think I'm going to go to frame 15 and make sure I'm on my transform node and my center position. And I'm just going to mark a keyframe there. And then I'm going to go to the end. I'm at 119. I want to go back 15 frames. So it'd be 104 and I'll mark a keyframe there. All right, all the way to the beginning. And I'm going to take my X center and slide it off to the right. And I'm going to go to my last frame and do the same thing. Slide it off to the right. There we go. And we'll go back to our edit page and we're going to go ahead and let this render. not going to take too long. It's just some very basic components here. All right. Now we'll go ahead and play this. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. My only thing about it is it's a little too sharp of a movement when it stops and then when it starts to move back out again. So we can fix that. I'm going to go to my transform node here where I have those keyframes and I'm going to go up here to spline and I'm going to open this guy up here. Make sure I've got everything selected, kind of zoom so I can see stuff here. So there's my four keyframes and basically I can just grab them all, just drag over them, go to this icon all the way on the left and say smooth. Well, <laughs> that's not going to do what I want. And let me show you why. All right. It's going to come in and it's going to bounce a little bit. Now, this might be the look that you want. And now it's going to kind of back up before it takes off. So, eh, you know, you might like that. You might not like it for this. I don't like it. I want it to be a lot crisper. So instead of selecting all of them, I'm going to select the first two and hit cur uh, smooth and I'll hit the last two and I'll hit smooth. That way it's only affecting those in and out points. Now, when we play this, it's going to just kind of slow down just a hair just enough so it's not really jerky. And when it goes to move back, it's going to do it. It's going to start off a little slower and then speed up. It's not super noticeable. And of course you can sit here and tweak these. It's just a standard, uh, spline type or uh, Bezier curve. So let me just give a little bump out there. And you can see what that does. Yes, my machine is not the fastest for doing this in real time, but you'll get the idea. So it's going to bump out. 
So subtle, it's, just, it's a subtle move. And again, you can just keep playing with this until you find some kind of action that works for however you want to do it. So this should go and then change the speed just a hair. And there it is. So you see how those speed changes can affect things. I'm just going to go ahead and undo that. And I'm just going to leave it like this. So it just kind of eases in and eases out a little bit. And I think that'll work just fine. So let's take a look at the finished product. So Ramon, thank you for asking the question. Happy to uh, give you yet another way of creating some titles. Now, if you go back and I'll put a link up um, at the end of the video here to the video on how to make these into templates so you can use them on the edit page. I'm just, I'm not gonna go through that step here because I've already done a video on that, but this is just yet another way of creating some titles. Hopefully you learned how to use the shape 3d be able to use the bender tool and uh, like before we've done keyframes but i also showed the spline tool and how to get things to ease in and out with your animations so hopefully that answered your question and i'll be sure i'll be doing a lot more on these a lot of people are asking for different types of titles and i love doing them so i'll be able i'll certainly create more of these types of videos for you if you like this video Go ahead and smash down on that like button. If you don't like it, smash that like button twice or the dislike twice. No problem. I don't mind. If you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe. Click on the bell icon to get notified every time I put out a new video. Really appreciate all you subscribers out there, all you viewers out there. You really make me uh, have to work for it sometimes. This one was pretty easy because I actually just did this title a few days ago for this real estate shoot. But I want to show how to do it anyway. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Carrie with Learn DaVinci Resolve, and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.